Microtik EOIP Tunnel. EOIP is a Microtik Router OS protocol. EOIP encapsulates Ethernet frames in Generic Routing Encapsulation or GRE. A use case for an EOIP tunnel is that it can bridge LANs or local area networks over the internet. So to understand or to relate on what the EOIP tunnel can do, so let's have this topology. So you have site number one and site number two and each of these sites is connected to the internet so you could have in a usual scenario where in each site will have its different subnets meaning to say in site number one i could have 192.168.100.0 network and on the other side site number two i could have 192.168.200.0 network However, what if there is a requirement to extend the local area network of site number one? In other words, I would like to have my 192.168.100.0 slash 24 subnet to be also in the site number two. So technically, your objective becomes you would like to bridge the local area network between two sites over the internet. So in such a scenario, we could have our PC in our sites be in the same subnet. So one PC would be like this, 192.168.100.100, and the other PC on another site will still carry the same subnet, 192.168.100.200. So in Microtik, we could configure an EOIP tunnel on site number one and site number two. So we are in our Microtik for site number one. So this Microtik is with the firmware Microtik Router OS 7.6. So let's just run through its basic configuration. So it has an IP address for Ether1, which is connected to the internet router. And then you have the route, default route going to the ISP router 100.100.1. And finally, you'll have the NAT, IP firewall NAT masquerade rule, which is anything going out Ether1, please masquerade. Let us just check reachability. So ping 100.100.100.1, that will be our gateway. And yes, there is a reply. Let's ping quadruple eight. And yes, there is a reply. So let's go over to our Microtik for site number two. So similarly with the firmware Microtik Router OS 7.6, let us check what is configured. So IP addresses. So it has an IP address on Ether1. Let's check the routes, so IP routes, and yes, it has a default route going to the ISP router. And finally, IP firewall net, it has a masquerade rule, which is anything going out to Ether1, source net, and action masquerade. Let's check reachability, ping 200, that 200, that 200, that 1, that will be our gateway. Thing, quadruple eight and yes there is reachability so before we configure the EOIP tunnel or Ethernet over IP so let us see if Microtik in site number two will be able to reach the Microtik in site number one on its public IP so that will be ping hundred that hundred that hundred that two and yes, we are able to reach the Microtik on site number one. So we are back in our site number one and let's configure EOIP. So we could go to interfaces and from the interface list window, you'll see EOIP tunnel tab. So as you can see, there is no EOIP tunnel configured. So let's click the plus sign. So under the general tab, you'll have the name of the tunnel the MAC address, 
the local and the remote address, the tunnel ID. So of course for your name, that will be the name of the tunnel. For the MAC address, so Ayana allows the use of a certain range of a MAC address. So later on we'll have that. So for the local address, so that will be the source address of the tunnel packets. So local on this router. In our case, for site number 1, that will be this address, 100.100.2. Then the remote address, that will be the address of the other side of the tunnel. That will be for the site number 2 Microtech router. So for the tunnel ID, each tunnel ID should be unique, but it should match on the other side of the tunnel. So meaning to say if I have 20 here, so the other site should match my tunnel ID. That will also be 20. For our EOIP tunnel configuration, so we will set the following. So our name will be site-eoip. The MAC address will be 00005E80001. The local address will be 100.100.2. That will be the Ether1 IP address. For the remote address, that will be the site 2 Ether1 IP address. For our tunnel ID, we will configure it as 12 for site 1 and site 2. Basically the same on our site number 2. So the name will be the same. However, the MAC address will be different. This one will be 01. This one will be 02 for our site number 2. The local address, so it will be its own local address. But that is for the Ether1 remote address will be the other side of the empty site number one. And the tunnel ID should match the site number one. That will be 12. So for our site number one, this is now configured the name, the MAC address, the local and the remote address, the tunnel ID. And we will click apply and click OK. So for site number one. We now have an EOIP tunnel configured. Now let's go to site number two and we configure the same parameters on our EOIP tunnel with difference on the MAC address, local address, and remote address, but similar on tunnel ID. So on site number two, so we have the name, the MAC address, instead of 01, it will become 02. Local address, this will now be the Ether1 IP address. So 200, 200, 200 at 2. Remote address, this will be the IP of site number 1 router. And the tunnel ID will match what is configured on site 1, which is 12. So let's click apply and click OK and see or notice that our EOIP tunnel is now with an R flag or it stands as running. Okay, so EOIP tunnel is now running between Microtech of site number one and site number two. But all we have done is just the first piece of the puzzle. That is in order for this segment on site number one and this local area network on site number two to be able to be bridged. Therefore, we will try to bridge Ether3 and the EOIP tunnel and also the same as on site number 2, Ether3 on its EOIP tunnel. Only by then that the Ethernet frames from example this PC will flow through the physical interface and because it's bridged to the EOIP, go to the EOIP tunnel and exit on the Ether3 because this is bridged and the PC site 2 will be able to see the Ethernet frames. But before we configure that bridge, let's just check first our PCs and show that they will not be able to reach one another. So the site 1 is 192.168.100.100 and the site 2 will be 192.168.100.200. So let's do a quick ping. 68.100.200. So enter. And there is no reply or unreachable. So here in our site one router, let's configure quickly that bridge. So we go to bridge, bridge tab, click the plus sign, and we just name it as bridge for our EOIP. 
so apply okay next will be the ports so under the ports tab click plus sign so the first member will be the site uip apply next let's add another member that will be ether3 on the same bridge click apply click ok similarly on our site to microtech router let's go to bridge plus sign so we name it as bridge uip just for simplicity sake let's make it the same apply ok next will be ports and practically the same site eoip apply ok and you have the ether3 on the same bridge apply ok so before we configure the bridge we are unable to reach the other side which is 192.168.100.200 now that the bridge is configured we bridge ether3 and the eoip tunnel on site 1 and site 2 routers let us see if this pc will be able to reach the site number 2 pc as if they are on the same local area network let's do a ping ping 192.168.100.200 and hit enter and yes there is now a reply and as if this pc on site number one is in the same local area network as the pc on site number two